Hello and welcome to your first GIMP lesson. We're just basically going to go through the toolbox and layers and just how to use the program. So first of all, make sure you have your toolbox and layers windows open. To open these, if you don't have them, you can go to Windows and then open them from there. And for other dialogs, oh, for other dialogs, you can go Dockable Dialogs and just open your dialogs from here. So let's just make a new image. Go to File New, and then obviously you can set your units here and the width and height, or choose a template like A4. I'm just going to go with a 200 by 200 pixels image. And the first thing I like to do is to zoom in on my image. So I can hold Control and then use my mouse wheel to scroll in and out. I imagine it's the same type of thing on a Mac, but with Command. I don't know, I haven't tried. And let's go through our tools. So to do this, in fact, I'm not going to use this image. I was just kind of showing you how to create an image there. So I've copied an image off of Google Images, just of a shoe. And if I want GIMP to make a new image, which is exactly the size of the image I copied, which can often be useful, all I have to do is press Control Shift V. Once again, I think it's probably similar on a Mac, but with Command. So this is our shoe. And it shows up in the layers as pasted layer. Obviously, we can rename it. All you have to do is double click on the text. And then you can rename whatever you want. I'm going to rename mine shoe. So let's go through our tools. We have our rectangle select tool. So if I just went into select a rectangle chunk out of the shoe, I can obviously cut it and do whatever I want from it from there. Same with a circle. And the last two tools also very similar. You can just do stranger shapes. Oops, I've kind of overlapped there. But yep, and then once you join them back up, you can make that selection. The magic wand tool is also extremely useful, or as they call it in GIMP, the fuzzy select tool. And basically, if we just click on that, we can click on an area. So let's say we want to cut out the shoe. So I'm just going to click on this white space, and it now selects this area around the shoe, because it realizes that's the bit I want. So because it's now selected, I can then delete that if I wanted. And then these squares mean transparent, so I now have pretty much a transparent picture of a shoe. There's some little white bits left behind because it hasn't done the job perfectly. I could adjust the threshold and the settings there to change how much I want it to select. But this image isn't great because this top area of the shoe here is very white, so the program's going to find it hard to differentiate between the white background and the white on the shoe. So um, that's the uh, fuzzy select tool. Then we have our select by color tool, which basically selects everything in the image of a certain color within a certain threshold. So if I just click here, let's say I wanted the white bits, then it's going to select all the white bits. If I then do the same with the purple, oh, then it's going to select all these purple type bits. That's the color select tool. It's also very similar to the fuzzy tool, but it's going to select the color from the whole image. We also have the scissors select tool. We can literally just make some points that's going to join up. Like that. And then you can just hit enter. That's going to make that a selection. And obviously from there you can do whatever. We have our foreground select tool, which is also very similar. Just make a simple shape. And then we can expand this. Like let's say we want the selection to be that. Or that. There's this white area, and we can just hit enter, and it's going to make that selection. Pen tool, similar story. You can use it for selection. You can also use it for making lines. So once you've placed your second point, you can then drag your mouse around to adjust the curviness of the line. So I'm just going to make a little thing there. And then we can do stroke path if we want to go over the line. So there we go. We now have a nice little black curve there where the pen line was. Next tool is the color picker tool, and basically that just picks the colors. So your colors are in this section here. So if you want to your foreground color, which is this top one here, instead of being black to be this nice purple, you have this color picker, and it's from the tip of this picker here, and you just click, and that is now your foreground color. You can also, uh, on the settings, change it to set background color, and then it's going to set it as your background color. Next is the zoom tool. It is for zooming in and zooming out. Extremely simple. Again, you can also hold control and then zoom in and out. Measure tool, it measures stuff. It isn't exactly that difficult. And it, it's mainly for measuring angles. So we can see from the bottom here that is 71.10 degrees. 
We have our move tools, we can move this whole layer around with the shoe. We have our alignment tool, obviously to align things, if I'm going to align it this way. This doesn't particularly work because this takes up the whole thing, but if I had something a bit smaller, I could align it to the left, align it to the right, etc. Our crop tool, and this is just for cropping stuff, so if I want to crop the image to only be this section, I could do that using the crop tool, like that. By the way, if you didn't know how I'm doing all these things I'm doing, I'm just pressing Control Z to undo. We have the rotate tool. You can obviously rotate things. You can use the mouse, or you can set the values in this rotate window. Scale tool for scaling things down or up. If you press this link button, then it will make it relative to the size of the first image, so it doesn't go all distorted. Next tool is our shear tool. And obviously we can distort the image like that. Next perspective, again, is simple. So if I want to just drag that like that. It's from a different perspective now. That wasn't a particularly good example. Flip tool, flip it over. Text tool is for text, and it automatically creates a new text layer. I just say hello. Oops. I just say hello, that's automatically creating a new text layer down here called hello. Next to our paint bucket tool, very simple, obviously it's going to fill it with the colour we choose. Gradient tool, or they're called the blend tool in GIMP, that's just for creating gradients. You can obviously set it from linear, bilinear, radial, I always like radial, so I'm just going to go for a nice little, I'm just going to set the foreground and background colours. To do that, by the way, you just click on the foreground or the background color, and then it comes up with a color selection. So like that, it creates nice little gradients. And you can also change this gradient from foreground to background, foreground to background, foreground to background. Oh, they're all foreground to background. They're just different modes. Foreground transparent, abstract one. It has plenty of presets and whatever else. Pencil tool, drawing stuff. Paintbrush tool, same story. Eraser, erasing things. Airbrush tool, like that. Obviously, then you apply different levels of pressure, which is good. Ink tool, again, same type of story as the paintbrush. Clone tool is quite cool. So, you can just adjust the scale. I like mine quite big for this. I just control click somewhere on the layer. So, let's say I wanted to copy this bit here. And then, if I let go of control, I can then draw and it will draw exactly as where I am. So if I just wanted to redraw a little area of the shoe over here, like that, then I can do that. Next is the spot hitting tool. It's very similar. Obviously this particular one's meant for healing spots. You can just choose an area of the skin that isn't, or that hasn't got spots, and then just brush it over the area that has spots. Perspective clone tool, Again, it's very similar, cloning after applying a, a perspective transformation. The blur tool, or you can change it to sharpen. Obviously, we're just going to blur. Very simple. We have the smudge tool. Just smudge things around. Or, you know, it actually has real life uses as well, by the way, not just messing stuff up. And last of all, the dodge burn tool, which basically lightens or darkens the thing. So at the moment, it is on dodge, so it's going to lighten it. I put it on burn, it's going to darken it. And that's all the tools. So remember we can set the color using these foreground and background little boxes here. And for every tool, there is tons of settings which you can customize and change as you need. Make sure, by the way, you're selected the layer you want to work on the whole time. Otherwise, you'll be like, what? Why is it drawing in the wrong layer? And you can also create new layers by using this new layer button. Rearrange layers with these up and down arrows, dupe layers, anchor layers, and delete layers, all using these little layer tools. And that is basically the basics of GIMP. I would suggest, before you go into lesson two, have a play around with all these different tools and, you know, just see what they do. You know, just try it. Maybe try getting an image of someone and healing their spots or, you know, cloning them somewhere else or something like that. 
And it's great fun actually image editing, but you can also use it for professional design as well. And it is free, you remember that? That's why people are considering it as an alternative to Photoshop, because obviously Photoshop's very expensive, GIMP is free but has similar tools. So thanks for watching. Play around with these tools, they're really great, and have a nice day.